Welcome to that American Football Show, powered by EP Sports. EP Sports is one of the top suppliers in the UK for all your NFL merchandise. Check them out today at epsports.co.uk. Uh, just as a reminder, if you do like what you're listening to, wherever you're listening to us from, uh, please do give us a like and a subscribe and a comment if you feel it nice. Uh, it really helps us out, um, so thank you. Uh, also, don't forget about our giveaway we've currently got running uh, for the NFL season. Uh, EP Sports have given us a fan pack to give away, so make sure you're checking out uh, somewhere there and getting involved. Uh, but on to the ELF. Week 11 is in the books. The Dragons and the Surge have both been faded from the playoff race uh, as Cologne takes the second seed in the Southern Division uh, behind Frankfurt. Meanwhile, they couldn't have written it better. The Kings and the Panthers, last week of the season, playing for that final playoff spot uh, after a nail-biting game in Hamburg. Uh, but first, we'll get on to what little news we have, uh, and that is this week's Chio MVP, three times this season. Madre London has broken 2,000 yards on 11 games. That's pretty nuts. Uh, what is what is more surprising, the fact that he's done 2,000 yards or the fact he's only got MVP three times? I was expecting it to be at least five exactly. or six. I was going to say exactly the same thing. I think we can just definitely just give him the MVP for the season. Yeah. And to, to echo what he said when he came on the show, because I was reading some of the reports on the ELF website, like they interviewed him about this MVP and I was like, they're like, so ha, ha, congratulations. Ha, um, how do you feel about it? It's like, well, all like all credit to my O-line, my fullback and my quarterback. They did everything. I'm like, damn, this guy is humble. Yeah, team player. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Nine games to go and get 2K yards is mental. Well, Gauthier was sorry, Gauthier was saying yesterday, like Madre London's an NFL caliber running back. Yeah, well, I mean, that's gonna be the the next thing for him, isn't it? I'm, I'm sure he is. I, I reckon he gets a shot. He's yeah. got to, can't have to get that many yards and not even get on late like, practice squad. No, no, he, you know, you say how humble he is talking about how it's his own line, fullback, quarterback, but at the end of the day, he's clearly got a lot of talent to be able to put these numbers and be able to put. It's like as much reps and that that he puts in as well. You say he needs to get faster. It's, the thing is, like, yeah, I just need to work on my speed. And I'm like, what do you mean work on your speed? You're faster than every other player. <laughs> you break through and you're gone. Like, yeah. No one is caught yet. Anyway, um, let's get into some of this weekend's action. Uh, so first game, we had the nail-biter, Le- Leipzig Kings at the Hamburg Sea Devils. An extraordinary effort. This would be the longest field goal in the European League of Football. Here it goes on the way. It has the power and the accuracy. 59 yards, no problem for Anderson. Now he's backing off. Looks like he's going to come for it, and here he goes. Here's the big blitz from Hamburg, forcing Birdsong out of the pocket. He might run for the first down. Here he goes, and he goes airborne and gets the first down. Yep, yeah, so this one was the last game of the season for the Hamburg Sea Devils. They'd already clinched the number one seed in the north and home field advantage. With this in mind, they actually arrested quarterback Jadrian Clark. And I'm not sure whether they rested or injured, but J- Xavier Johnson didn't play either. Um, as Adam pointed out when I was watching the game, a lot of other starters did play, like uh, Keanu was playing, a lot of the defence, Justin was playing. I think that goes down to the number of injuries that Hamburg had and they've not got much depth at, the moment, depth at the moment. So with the Panthers' result, Leipzig needed a win to keep their playoff hopes alive. Uh, the game didn't start as scripted. Hamburg came out like the team with the season on the line. Justin Rogers returned the opening kickoff to 33 yards. Ampo ran 33 yards to the four-yard line. Then Cisse, who's the starting quarterback, threw to nil for 25 yards, then Ampo, four yards, touchdown, bang, just like that. Four plays, 66 yards uh, from good starting field position. Neither team then managed to move the ball uh, much in the rest of the second quarter. Michael Birdsong threw a rare interception to Curtis Slater. This gave Hamburg good field position again, going into the second quarter, sorry. On second 13, Cissé completed a beautiful pass. Hamburg got help from the refs with a pass interference penalty that gave them 44 yards downfield. Uh, after two full starts on uh, Keanu, 
Cissé rushed 10 yards to the eight. Then the next play was a touchdown to nil again. That was 14 nil to the Sea Devils. Um, Leipzig just couldn't get going. And the only score of the half was a league record 59 yard kick by Sea Devils Anderson. That made it 17 nil. So at this point, it looked like one way traffic. Leipzig was being outplayed by the Sea Devils. It was like the previous game last week. Uh, sea Devils got off to a quick start. I thought they were just going to absolutely destroy the game. But Leipzig then got on the board in the third quarter with a big rush by Awini for 26 yards. And Alpha Jallo actually ran 24 yards for a touchdown, 17 6. Uh, no further scoring in the third quarter. Fourth quarter then was a totally different story. It started with a strong Leipzig drive capped by 19 yard touchdown pass from Birdsong to Nuttall. By now, momentum had definitely shifted and you could feel the Kings were coming back. Uh, sea Devils were struggling to get any offense going at all. They only managed five plays for two yards on the next drive. With eight minutes, 25 seconds left on the clock, Leipzig got the ball going, knowing that they had to score, but not leave too much time on the clock either. And they looked like they uh, failed in that. Looked like Sea Devils had a chance to stop them. It was fourth and six, and they went for it. Birdsong showed why he's one of the best players taking ownership and he rushed for five for eight yards for a first down. So Birdsong himself actually said he's not got legs at all, but he ran about 20 yards because he's been chased out of the pocket. He went round to the right, ran and actually dived for the first down. It was it saved the game for them, basically. Um, so then that drive continued. Birdsong then hit a lovely touchdown pass to the Nettle, giving the Kings an 18-17 lead. They tried for a two-pointer, but failed it. So it was 17 there was still a couple of minutes left on the clock, but Sea Devils didn't do anything at all. And fittingly, the game ended with a sack by Carl Kitchens, uh, which led to an extraordinary comeback. Um, it was well-deserved, and Leipzig now, as Adam said, in with a chance to do a playoff spot if they beat the Panthers. So my MVP is Michael Birdsong, 19-29, two touchdowns, one interception, but his eight-yard run on the fourth down play, that kept their season alive. Uh, interesting start I noted with Michael Birdsong, sorry, without Michael Birdsong, they're 0-3, but with him they're 5-1. and So if you're looking for a league MVP and you're going with a literal definition of the most valuable player for the season, it's got to be Michael Birdsong. They can't win without him. Yeah, I'd be lying if I said I got to half time and I was like, well, that game's done. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. When you, you mentioned there about how they, they rested a lot of their starters, I think for Hamburg, obviously it's a good thing physically, but I think mentally as well. If they had lost this game with their starters on the pitch after they'd lost to Rotslav last week, then they would be going into this into this championship game in the in the Northern Division, just thinking, God, whoever we're going to play, we, we've lost to them with our full strength team. So I think it, that probably helped them. Obviously, they would have rather have got the win, but yeah, I just think that's a bit of a blessing in disguise. Yeah. Hamburg are going in with the worst possible preparation, though. So they've lost this game. They lost to the Panthers. The week before that, I think it was Berlin that they only just beat. So their confidence got to be down. They have got a bye week next week. So hopefully they can rest up. They, they might even get some of the players back. So otherwise, because they've got either play Leipzig or uh, the Panthers. And they're two teams that are doing really well at the minute. So let's see. Yeah, the, the Northern Division definitely looks more fluid than the Southern Division to say. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, so speaking of the Southern Division, uh, I have the Frankfurt Galaxy going to Barcelona to play the Dragons. As the kick goes up into the air, and it's grabbed right in the end zone, just a yard deep. Here comes Constant. Here he goes. He's got some speed. He's got some blockers. Here he goes down the right side. He is all alone. 20, 10, 5, touchdown. Well, that's how you respond. And the fans in green love it. They can, if they can get another touchdown. Flags fly. This should be a free play. Pass to Regla, and he grabs it. Oh, my goodness, Regla. Bring it down. Constant in motion. Takes it on sweep. Looks like he's got a pass. He does. And that's complete to Bertain.
Um, so Barcelona had to win big to keep their road to the playoffs in sight. Uh, but unfortunately, the very stoic defence of Frankfurt kept them off that. Uh, in fact, the first half would only see each team sc scoring once. Uh, and there was a lot of bad special team snaps in this game. I mean, if you look at any of the kicks, there was probably a snap that went wrong. Um, so game started off with Vili Velasti from the Galaxy forcing a fumble on the Dragons' first play from scrimmage. Uh, recovered on the 23-yard line, but credit to the Dragons, they forced a three and out straight and away and the field goal was missed, which is very un-Galaxy-like. Uh, Velasti would get another sack on the next drive for the Dragons, uh, forcing a three and out. Uh, and then the Galaxy kind of got their offense in order and powered down the field uh, on the back of uh, Regler and Mahongu. Uh, Mahongu got the 12-yard touchdown here, but the PAT was no good. Uh, Galaxy would then kick it to the return master, Gene Constant, who got a 100-yard touchdown straight off the back of that, which was a, it was a great run. He, just, he's, he was running around his own teammates. He's just so quick. Uh, like if, if you watch it, he like once he's passed them, no one's near him. But yeah, um, PAT was again no good, 6-6. Six, six. Uh, so rest of the half was really just a back and forth. Uh, not too much happened. The Dragons DB, Nico Lester, uh, he got a, an interception on a deep ball in the end zone, um, which, sorry, it wasn't a deep ball, it was a different game. But yeah, he did get a, an interception right on the end zone, which pretty much put a stop to the Galaxy's first half. Uh, and then the, the half ended there. Uh, so second half was started similarly. Uh, Dragons interception, though, called back to penalty, uh, which is a bit gutting. Uh, then Galaxy started getting going again. Uh, Regler got a really good third down catch. Uh, and then Sullivan launched it down to Shores for the touchdown. Uh, Mahongu would get the two-point attempt here. Uh, and then more bad snapping led the Dragons to another three and out. Uh, and, of course, Galaxy would then look to Regler and Mahongu again for a really good drive down the field. Uh, it resulted in a 22-yard touchdown to Regler. Uh, and Dragons were pretty much in desperation mode now. They had to win by a good amount to get into the playoffs, so it was pretty desperate. Uh, and Zach Edwards started connecting with Remy Bertolini a couple of times, got a nice touchdown off of that. Uh, and Edwards ran in the two-point attempt himself, which was a really good run for him. Uh, got into within one score, 22-14. Uh, but then the Galaxy ran out the rest of the quarter with seven and a half minutes left to go. Um, but yeah, that ended the game, stood on the neck of the Dragons, and they are being faded from the playoffs. Uh, MVP for this, I've given... It was pr pretty balanced spreadsheet. Uh, but I've given it to Sebastian Gauthier. Uh, nine solo tackles, three tackles for loss. Uh, also mentioning Velasti, who I mentioned at the beginning, two and a half sacks, uh, including a forced fumble and recovery. Uh, An honourable mention goes to Gene Constant, who only got 27 yards receiving, but 193 kick return yards, including his 100-yard touchdown. Uh, but yeah, Dragons are out. Galaxy look good. Uh, and if I haven't mentioned yet, we have just interviewed Sebastian Gauthier. Uh, so that'll be coming out soon. Really nice guy. Uh, so make sure you have a listen to that. So that's the Dragons done now, isn't it? That's their, their 10 games. I think they needed something ridiculous. Like they had to win by 27 points yeah. or something to yeah. even have a chance and against the Galaxy. You're, you're not going to have much of a hope to no. do that. No, it's tough. I mean, what would we if, we... if you were to rate their season out of 10? It's a problem, though, because if you separate, it's like quarterback, receiver play. Mm. Easy 10 out of 10, probably the best. Yeah. Yeah. The defense, they had a really good defense. You've got Fernandez on the line, you've got Leicester in the backfield. Yeah, like Leicester's been defense. Brilliant. It's just that O line. Like their yeah. early season with that O line at the first three or four games, they just didn't give Zach an opportunity to win. If they win two of those games, they're in the playoffs. See, I couldn't name uh, Dragons running back, I don't think. Pretty much every other Adrian team. Adrian Jimenez. Okay. So I couldn't, I couldn't, not, nothing. Uh, but yeah. if you look at statistically, Barcelona have got the second best quarterbacks statistically. They've got the number one and the number two yeah. statistically best receivers. Yeah. So it tells you everything. But in, I think it's a positive in a way. They, you know, if they keep these players that they've got, that it's, they've got a real good foundation to build on. So I'm just hoping that that's what they can do next year. It's a case of next year because we've debated is it going to be a case of, everyone just leaves their team and goes, right, I'm going to go where I want to go. Or is it going to be, there's a good amount of loyalty with the teams, mm -hmm. new talent's just going to prop them up a bit and you won't see too many big name changes or 
Are we going to see Zach Edwards playing for the Galaxy? We're going to see um, Lucas playing for the the Sea Devils. I don't know. Yeah, I think obviously we know from somebody uh, that contracts are short, so I think there will be a lot of change. A lot of people leaving the It'll league. A lot, a lot of people changing people teams. Well. Yeah, yeah, and I think it depends on the coaching staff as well. Because if you're on, I can't think of an example. I don't want to pick on anyone in particular but if you're on a team and you don't get on with the coach and you're like I could I like this league but I can go and play on that team or flip side if you're playing for coach K for example like and yeah he brought so many players over it. from the universe yeah exactly and he's gone now got a good reputation throughout Europe so like I want to play for that guy especially yeah. if Frankfurt go on and win yeah it's definitely going to be loyalty to coaches there mm-hmm. at least because there's yeah. not too many high level coaches that you'd want to play for Okay, uh, moving on. Do you want to run us through your game there, Joe? Yeah, so I took the other team trying to fight for that second place in the North Division in the playoffs. I took the Rotterdam Panthers up against the Berlin Thunder. So from the 15-yard line, with the end around, look out, it is Turpin time! I have to show us just a little bit more offensive output for us to become true believers. This will go a long way to doing that. Shontavious Jones. And Mr. Jones has himself a touchdown. In Rotslav, uh, the Panthers won 35-12. to 12. So, note on the Thunder, uh, they've been sort of playing around with their quarterbacks, just trying out different things. Uh, Zebre, who's a wide receiver slash quarterback, he started uh, in the QB position for the Thunder instead of Calvin Stitt. Just to point out before we, you know, unfortunately it wasn't his best game. Uh, stats weren't amazing. 25% completion rate for only three yards. Um, so it shows you how good the Panthers were sort of all over them, but also how much the, the Thunder, as someone who's watched them a bit closer, as I like to call myself a Thunder fan for this year, um, they just haven't managed to get things going. They've had some exciting moments, but yeah. So they started with Zebra at quarterback. Unfortunately, it wasn't wasn't perfect. The first play of note um, in the game was about after five minutes when Zebra threw the ball into the arms of Usamek, who ran the ball to the Berlin 22. Six snaps later, O'Connor threw his first touchdown of the game to his wide receiver, Bannett. The PAT was missed as the Panthers led six to nothing. It wasn't long before the Panthers had the ball back and after being set up by an impressive run from our friend Pascalini, um, Tard lead at the kicker. He um, kicked a field goal to add three. He also kicked another field goal very shortly after to make sure Rotslav were 12 nothing up at the break. So not too much action going on, just the one touchdown and two field goals. So it wasn't the, the most amazing game, but you know Rotslav were doing what they needed to do because it's a very important game for them this uh, it was an impressive game, however, from Turpin uh, for the Panthers, whose quick, agile runs, I don't know how much you boys have noticed of him this year, but he's just, he can almost just turn on the sixpence and is just the most, well, probably one of the most agile blokes in the league. Um, he set himself up for a 15-yard touchdown and he was a problem for Berlin all game. The PAT was converted, the Panthers went 19 nothing to the good. And not so long after, Leader kicked his third field goal of the game to kick off the fourth quarter. So it was 22 nothing going into the fourth quarter. As I mentioned earlier, they've been playing around their quarterbacks. So at half time, the Thunder chucked on Calvin Stitt to change things up and it paid homage in the fourth quarter as he found his favourite target, Shontavis Jones, for a 74-yard touchdown. It was, it was one of those where Stitt threw him. I mean, he was in double coverage, so Jones did really well to pick the ball up and... The other, the Panthers uh, defensive backs had a lot of time and a lot of sort of yardage on him, but Shontavius, I think he took two steps and he was gone and he just ran in for the touchdown. He's been another one of those players who has been on one of the sort of less impressive teams, but he will, Dominate, whatever yeah. happens, yeah, he, he sticks out like a sore thumb. He's, he's that good on that team. So um, after a nice drive, not too soon after, O'Connor found Turpin for a nice 22-yard touchdown to fully take the game up Berlin's reach. They didn't dishearten the Thunder, though. However, they um, they scored on the next drive. After a couple penalties from the Panthers, it rushed in to score yet another rush touchdown for him this year. I was trying to find out how many it was that he's done this year, but that must be about five or six. And a lot of the time, when the Thunder just get in that position, Stitt just takes the ball and runs it in. 
Um, I mean, uh, yeah, there have been some questions regarding Stitt's passing this year, but one thing for sure is that his running is yeah. very, very good. Uh, the Panthers, they're a very determined team, and this showed as they made a big push with a few minutes left. And after a few plays, O'Connor threw the ball to Zebra for the quarterback's third touchdown of the game. So the game finished there, uh, finished 35 12. It was comfortable for the Panthers. A lot of people maybe thought it, it, you know, it would be close. Sorry, it would be a bit more of a thumping. Uh, it was a lot closer than we thought. The when it comes down to it, this it wins obviously the most important thing. But points scored is very important in the ELF. So for me, I was thinking, why haven't they pulled off a lot of their starters? They got a massive game next week, but it's just purely the fact they need insurance points just yeah. in case uh, things go badly wrong for them. So, yeah, the Thunder go to play the surge next week, looking for that third win. I believe both teams are on two, whereas the Panthers have an absolutely massive game in Leipzig uh, to decide who gets that second playoff space in the Northern Division. Uh, my MVP is tough. I'm going to give it to Turpin. I've just changed my mind last minute. You know, uh, rushing and receiving. Uh, he went for 119 yards and two touchdowns. But I obviously, Lucas O'Connor, he had 342 yards and three touchdowns. He's just been one of those consistent performers yeah. all the way through the year. And yeah. another one that you feel because Zach Edwards has been so good, his stats are fantastic. I think he's got the um, highest yards now uh, over the season, which is impressive. He's, because- yeah, he's got high, stat, uh, high yards, but don't forget, he's also got one game left as well. Yeah, exactly. So he's been a fantastic player for the Panthers and they owe a lot of their success to him. Yeah, speaking to Sebastian about, we were, we were just talking about some of the players he's faced. And obviously he brought up Gene Constant playing the Dragons, but he mm-hmm. said the new guy for the Panthers, Turpin, might be faster than him. So you he's saying that. so quick. Yeah, he's, he is lightning quick. He said he's probably the new Tyreek Hill of the ELF. He's got to be the best of the in-season addition for any team. Because mm-hmm. he's just, I, I want I'd to argue play. Zachary Blair for the surge has been pretty big as well. Uh, linebacker. Yeah, and there's also a cornerback, or I think that might be Turpin I'm thinking of, actually. Yeah, he's, he's pretty good. And I just think it's a little bit, for some of the players on Berlin, if they were on a better team, Shantavius Jones and Jock Crawford, they mm. would be putting up mad numbers. But can I just say to the people who designed the jerseys next year, if you've got a number seven and a number one, change the font because they look exactly yes. the same on the field and it's really hard when you're watching to work out yep. if it's number seven or number one yeah Jock yeah. Crawford I, sometimes yeah it's it always seems... Jock Crawford yeah. jersey in it <laughs> anyway yeah that that Kings Panthers game is the one to look out for in it mm-hmm. yeah uh, and finally the last game we had the Stuttgart surge going to the Clone Centurions Shot throwing this one up, but hell Mary, that prayer not answers is picked up. Bad pass is intercepted. Ellis out of the gun. Cologne bringing five. They're going to Steiger ball in the end zone. He skies up. He's got it. Touchdown. Oh, what a wonderful grab by Paul Steigerwald. Goes to the bottom of the screen. London up the middle. Madre London. He's gone and he's free. Walk in. Touchdown for Madre London. Touchdown Cologne. Uh, Stuttgart came into this game fighting the favourites for the second seed. Uh, but both Barcelona and the Surge had a chance. Uh, they start off hot. Uh, some big passes down the field by Aaron Ellis. Uh, but they were stopped at the one-yard line uh, and then two runs for no yards and a 13-yard sack um, by the clone Centurions defence. Um, Stefan specifically got that big sack, uh, made the surge have to kick a field goal. Uh, Cologne would then go three and out on their first drive uh, and they gave bad, a good field position to the surge again. I think it was at the four-yard line. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Ellis threw an interception. Nice deep ball to Jansen. Uh, and then Cologne was shut down again. Uh, as the surge looked to remove London from making an impact in the game. Uh, and weirdly, the next drive, Aaron Ellis had been taken out for the backup Winterlick, uh, who had played a, a couple of um, snaps before. But uh, for here and out, it was just punts, punts, punts. A um, lot of good defensive plays against each other. Um, the surge DP, Ludwig Mayorga, uh, got a nice interception. Uh, Ellis was back on the field after that. 
uh, and there was a really good pass to Steigerwald um, to put the surge up 9-0 uh, after the pass was good. Uh, Cologne finally got their good offensive drive together. Um, they Quinton Pounds has been missing for this is his third game in a row now, so that is it is big for them. They, they need him, and hopefully he's back for the playoffs. Um, but yeah, Weinreich passing the ball downfield multiple times. Um, touchdown was called back against Arras um, right on the one-yard line. Um, but Weinrich did a nice sneaky sneak in for six points. Uh, but the TPAT was no good. Uh, Cologne then forced Surge to punt. And that was the half there, 9-6 to Surge. Uh, second half was a good clash cover band because London was calling. I've stolen that specifically off someone. That was an announcer, but I like it. Uh, first drive in the second half, he rushed for 29 yards in the whole drive. Uh, he did fumble after a hit by Zachary Blair, uh, but uh, he would then get a nine-yard catch in for his first touchdown. Uh, Cologne's defence then forced a turnover on downs um, and then again trading punts. Uh, and then Cologne would start another nice offensive drive. Um, really bad for the surge here. Zachary Blair went off injured. Um, he's by far their best defensive player. Um, and um, that was on a, a long Madre London run. Uh, surge did force the fourth down, but backup quarterback for the um, Cologne Centurions, Novak, converted it. Uh, and then the following play, London got a big 40-yard run straight down the middle for the touchdown. Um, Cologne was fired up now they weren't going to get stopped uh, and the defence got a sack closely followed by an interception by Mbe uh, Surge are down 19-9 at this point um, they, they were playing the heart out credit to them they weren't giving up uh, they, the Cologne offence I think they started on the 13 yard line so 13 yards to go they stopped 8 plays in a row uh, to stop the touchdown which was really impressive uh, but the offense got the ball back and just couldn't move it. Uh, and a sack buried them deep. Uh, they punted the ball with three minutes to go uh, down by, what, 10. So they didn't really have a chance. Uh, and Cologne ran the game out. 19-9. Uh, MVP for this. Who else? Mantra London. 138 rushing yards, 16 receiving yards, and a touchdown for both. Uh, my honourable mention goes to Zachary Blair, who got six solo tackles, of which four of them were for loss. So that's a... Nice little stat line, but the, the, the surge defense had a couple of stats thrown about. Uh, but yeah, uh, Cologne heading to the second seed, they're, they're going to be taking on Frankfurt, which is a pretty gruesome matchup for them. Yeah, you mentioned it earlier. You, you said how uh, they're missing Quinton Pounds, and I think it is quite a big obvious miss. They're really going to want to get him back because this offense was one of the ones that, you know, really high scoring and yeah, the surge defense is, is a very good defense, but you probably would have expected them to maybe score a lot more points um, than they did this week. And I think that losing one of those dimensions is such a, a yeah. Cause it just means if they focus on stopping London, they're, they're, yeah. they're, they're normally going to be okay. Yeah. But that shows you, even if you try to stop London, 138 yards. Yeah. <laughs> Who do we think our Tufts MVP is then? Let's look up through your guys' stats again. Who are your guys, Tim? Michael Birdsong. Bird, Birdsong kept his team yeah. in the... I'd say Birdsong or... or <laughs> how, many time, how many he times? Can, he ran a fourth down on the final drive that won the game for them. Yeah, you look at stats, I think, like... Gauthier, like his stats are really impressive, <laughs> like they're really, really. But I just like if you if you keep your team alive another week, I just think that's worth more than no matter how many tackles you make. And if you just watch Birdsong play, his passes are just a thing of beauty. Mm. It's like, it's, there's no ugly passes that no. go. He's the most, most pro-ready his... quarterback in the oh, he's, God, yeah. But he's aesthetically just, it's just nice to watch him <laughs> throw a football. Yeah, Birdsong's a good guy. Okay, well done, Michael. I'm going to send you a text and say the tough <laughs> <laughs> Um, But yeah, that's one more week left. What a long road it's been. We, are, we ask this every week, who's winning the big game? So what big game is it's got to be Panthers Kings. Panthers Kings, yeah. Who's who's where's it at? Is it at? Panthers it's at or? the Kings. I'm trying to think, is there any? Big I'm so teams? torn. I'm so I'm thinking I'm thinking Birdsong Masterclass, 
or I'm thinking the Panthers just I think I'm, the Kings actually take this one quite handily. I'm I'm changing my la- my mind on the last week. I'm going for the Panthers now. Nah, I don't think the Panthers have it in them. They've they've beaten good teams, but the Panthers have been beaten by teams oh, they should beat. And the Kings have only lost to teams Ooh. they can have words on for, really. It depends which Kings team turn up. If it's the Kings team that played in the second half of that last game, definitely the Kings, but they weren't very good in the first half. No. So are there any major I'm, injuries? Not I'm aware of. I'm I'm gonna go for the Kings, I think. And also what I didn't know. Is the other game obviously Stuttgart Berlin? If this was the NFL, mm. that would be for the first overall pick. It would be. And then you've got Cologne playing Frankfurt. Yeah. Which, Which is will a... be a preview game. It will. Oh, yeah, of course. So, three actually games with something uh, to go for. You've got a. Do you, do you reckon though, Frankfurt and Cologne is just going to be re- like. As second string as possible. It's got to be in it. You're yeah. not going to risk you Madre London. No, you're not playing Madre. Surely not. Nah. No, nah, yeah, you can't risk injuring him. No. Yeah, I, th- I think you're right. It could just be a... That could literally just be a City starters game. Mm-hmm. But, but like you said, with, with Hamburg and Stingy, like, have they got enough starters to actually rest? Well, that's it. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one that they, they'll going to be good. It's like, like the Steelers and the Steelers, Ravens and Browns. I feel like they always end up playing each other week 17, then the yeah. playoffs. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, let us know how you think those games are going to pan out. Uh, of course, uh, like I said before, we've got a giveaway running, but make sure you're checking out our social medias. Uh, we're putting all our content on there, our player interviews. Uh, Sebastian Gauthier, like I mentioned, we just interviewed. We've got Kyle Kitchens coming on from the Kings next week. So obviously if they win, that's going to be a, an absolutely cracking interview. Um, where can they find all our socials, Joe? Yep, our Twitter and Instagram is at TAFS underscore UK and our Facebook is that American Football Show. And we have an ELF Facebook group as well if you want to, to join that if you're if that's your preferred social media. And if you like YouTube, you can find us on there, that American Football Show. Um, like, comment and subscribe. <laughs> um, <laughs> I hate saying that. Uh, but yeah, please leave us feedback. Um, let us know what you guys want to hear, what you enjoy us speaking about, if you think we're missing out on anything. Um, anything before we go, guys? No, just but keep looking at our NFL content that's coming out. As Absolutely, well. yeah. Got a lot of stuff coming out there. Got some fantasy stuff coming for you. Should mention we've actually just joined a fantasy league with some of the ELF players. We've got Zach Edwards in there, Justin Rogers, Jadrian Clark, Dell. Um, actually, Sebastian Gauthier wants me to say get Coop on the mic as well. Um, they want <laughs> they want Coop from uh, the universe to not the universe Desmond Cooper from the Galaxy to be the announcer for the finals. Yeah, I've heard that. I've seen that this has been a thing that's been going round. Get Coop on the mic hashtag yeah. hashtag get Coop on the mic. That's what we've got to get going. Uh, but thank you everyone for listening. Make sure you head over and check out our friends at EP Sports for all your NFL and equipment needs. And we will see you all next week.